Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here, coming to you after a, a nice long break. Um, coming to you today with a new video tutorial. Uh, I've been creating and playing with some ideas lately of how to kind of reboot the video tutorials. I've In the past, I've recorded a lot of videos covering just about every tool as far as uh, the ones that I think are important, especially the ones that relate to the art canvas, because as you know, that's what I specialize in. Uh, and, and I look back at that and think I've covered everything. And then I ask folks and they tell me they don't care about learning every tool every time. They care about uh, kind of relearning and refreshing on tools that maybe I've previously taught inside the scope of new fresh tutorials. So it looks like what I'm going to try to do is bring you fresh tutorials that keep using the same tools that maybe I've already taught you. Hopefully, and leave in the comments below, um, let me know if that is of interest to you because I got to a point where I thought, hey, I've pretty much covered everything. I'm just going to leave it alone until they come up with uh, new tools or a new version of the software but it looks like maybe that's not going to happen anytime soon, and I, I get a lot of questions, or I get a lot of inquiries that, hey, when are you going to record a new video? So what I've, I think I've decided to do is do a lot of the same stuff, but with brand new and fresh designs, maybe mixing the tools up to where I, you're just going to keep refreshing and relearning these tools. So uh, if that's of interest to you, and you think that's a good idea, I would appreciate that feedback. Or if you don't, if you don't like that idea, um, I would appreciate the feedback in the comments below. Okay, so what I'm going to record today will probably be a two-part video. The first part I think I'm going to just throw out there uh, on the internet and in the Facebook and all of that as a, as a freebie. You don't have to be a subscribed member of passionstitch.com to see it. And maybe I'll do that in future videos as well because uh, that'll really help give people an idea of how I teach and maybe I can build up my subscribers. So this will be out there. If you find it on Facebook, share away. Um, what we're going to do today is not just another silhouette video. By this time in your, uh, in your hobby of digitizing, you've probably done a few <clears throat> Uh, silhouettes. Now, there's a lot of things that we can do with silhouettes. We can, um, uh, one easy thing that people like to do is make applique projects, boom, right out of silhouettes. But what we're going to do, I saw on the, uh, I saw a design um, on the, if you're familiar with hatch embroidery, it's like, uh, it's a watered down version of this program. It's less expensive, but it's not as feature rich. It does not have nearly as many features, but it's still a solid package. I saw a kangaroo design. It was a uh, it was like a silhouette design, but it had some ad. It was made up of a, an assembly of abstract shapes, and I thought, hey, that would be uh, that would make a pretty good tutorial to show folks how to take a silhouette of their choosing, silhouette design, and spice it up or kick it up with a bunch of abstract shapes. So let me walk you through that. The first place that we need to go is probably Google Images so we can find some inspiration. Now I'm going to hop on, on over to Google and what I've chose to do because um, one of my daughters really loves elephants. That's kind of the theme of her um, since she was a baby the elephant was her theme and we also have uh, another fun one to do, maybe I'll do it later, is uh, my youngest daughter, who's seven months old, Stella, mommy has chosen the llama as hers. But we're going to do the elephant, or I'm going to do the elephant. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to Google Images. And once you're on Google Images, you can just type in something like here, elephant silhouette, or do something, you don't have... You don't have to do the elephant. You can go grab something else. Um, it can be any animal or it can be uh, basically any shape. Just You just want to keep this one rule in mind. You don't want it to be too small and you don't want it to be fine in detail. Okay? So doing this project, like doing um, 
a vase of flowers in a silhouette because there'll be so many. Okay, let me let me show you. Let, I'm just going to show you visually what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe flowers silhouette. Okay, so something like this. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find a good. Okay, you can see something like this. You see how fine the detail is in some of these. This would not be good for this tutorial. All right. One reason why I chose the elephant, let me go back, is because you you got you got something like this right here. It doesn't have to be as big as an elephant, but you can see it's a nice, strong, beefy silhouette. There's not a lot of fine lines and not a lot of fine detail. So I'm selecting um, an elephant. The one on the Hatch Embroidery website that I saw was a, a kangaroo. So even something like a kangaroo, or you could do a cat or a dog, you know, any of that is going to be okay. But just stay away from the fine lines, in my opinion. That's not where we want to start, okay? So go find your shape. If you need to pause me, go ahead and pause me. But go find your shape. Go to, go to uh, Google Images. It is a great resource for your own personal use and your own personal learning. Um... Uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind, just a disclaimer, is that a lot of the video or a lot of the images that you see here might have a copyright attached to it. So you can really, for educational purposes and your own personal use, you're good to go. But you would not want to use a copywritten uh, image in a commercial way um, at all. So you probably already know that. But for your own personal learning educational experience you are good to go so I'm gonna select this guy here all right this I thought this was a nice clean shape I'm just going to you know you would just right click on the image and you would hit uh, save image as save it as something save it in a location that you can easily reference I usually just save it on my desktop and then after I'm done using it I go to my desktop and I delete it I get rid of it. I don't keep it on my computer. All right, so after you've done that, okay, and if you need to pause me and get caught up, you go ahead and do that. After you do that, let's hop on over to Art Canvas, or let's let's open the digitizing software, and then we will switch to Art Canvas. All right, so I've already pre-done that. And you can see you're going to, when you open the digitizing software, you'll start off here on the embroidery canvas. We'll go ahead and just switch right on over to Art Canvas, and we're going to be starting a new document. Now you can see I don't have my document in portrait view. I have it in like a landscape view, and I just have an 8.5 by 11. All right, it's no big deal. So the next thing that you're going to do is you need to import that image that you selected. And I'm just going to go, you can go right here and click that icon. But you can see right there, you could also do Control I. I believe you can also go to File and go to Import. So there are literally, well, that's three ways. Um, there's also a fourth way where you could just go to where the, the file is located and drag it. That's not the easiest. That's not always the easiest. Um, so really, there are three easy ways to go ahead and do that. And you can see here is my black elephant silhouette. I'm going to hit import and I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard and boom, there I have an elephant right there. Now this elephant, if you zoom in, as you know, this is just a like a JPEG. So it's going to be pixelated. So the next thing that we need to do is handle this image and, and turn it into a vector basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crop this guy down. You can see over here. It's a black elephant silhouette. Even though they call it vector, it is a JPEG version of the vector. So it's not a vector at all. Uh, I'm going to select that guy, and you can see how big it is. And I'm just going to crop it down a little bit. Makes it easier to work with this elephant. All right. So I'm going to go over and hit crop. And then we'll just crop out all that we need. And then hit enter on the keyboard. And now I've cropped that guy down. Now, there will still be some white background here when I convert this to curves or convert this to a vector. So the next thing that I want to do with this guy is select him 
and then let's just trace bitmap and since this is such a simple design we could probably get away with just a quick trace all right if we just go hit quick trace let's see what we got that did a really good job you'll notice let me hit undo you'll notice I'm gonna zoom in here you'll notice that when I quick traced it took the eyeball away that's fine with me I don't need that eyeball there anyway and you'll obviously see what I'm talking about when I get to that. So I'm going to go back to Quick Trace, Quick Trace that dude out. Everything looks nice and clean, okay? And now what I've done is I've turned that JPEG version of the elephant into a curve. And the curve has three objects. You can see over here in the Object Manager, if I expand those, we have the white, this white of the ear right here. I have the black silhouette of the elephant, and then I have this white element, which is the background. I'm going to delete that away because I do not need that at all. No, I do not. And I'm also going to select here and delete away that JPEG, leaving me with only two objects, which are both curves. Okay, And curves just mean those are vector elements. No matter how much I zoom in on that vector element, you can see that line stays clean. It does not pixelate. It never pixelates because this, these are not pixels. These are like mathematical coordinates at this point. Okay, everything is clean. So I can select this guy. I'll hit P on the keyboard just to keep him nice and simple and tidy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm just going to create a few shapes. I'm going to get a few shapes out there. I'm going to make my own shapes. And I'm going to layer those shapes on top of this elephant, kind of lining everything up. And I'm going to use my Smart Fill tool in Corel Draw to create those abstract shapes with inside the borders of the elephant silhouette. Now, let me show you how we do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of... Um, Let's see, for time, you probably don't mind sticking with me, but this might take a while, all right? <clears throat> I will show you the technique, and then if you need to fast forward, you go ahead and do that. Because once you got the technique down, then it's just a matter of going through and laying them down and coloring them, okay? And that's what you're here for, the technique. So let me show you. What we're going to do from here is... You can see we have our nice fancy toolbar that Bernina put in there. If you go like right in this blank spot right in here, okay, you can see where it says letter. That's a, that's a drop down. Not there. Not there. Just under it in this blank space. If I right click, all right, and some of you probably already know this trick. If I right click, then I have another menu bar pop up, and from there I can hit, you can see I I can left click on toolbox and now I get another set of tools, the original Corel Draw tools. All right. For some reason, uh, Bernina hides some of the art canvas tools that are available to you. But when you show the toolbox, you see you can come right down here and this guy right here is going to be the smart fill tool. We're going to use him a lot. So we might as well be able to visually see the smart fill tool. Okay. This little smart field tool is going to be your best friend. You guys are going to be BFFs. I'm not even kidding. You're going to love it. If you haven't used it, you're going to love it. If you've used the smart field tool in the past, you're on the other side of that computer screen right now saying, yes, Clint, I know all about this, and you are correct. I love this tool. So I'm serious. I'm not even kidding. All right. Just a second. I'm going to get a drink of coffee here. All right, so let's make some shapes first, and I'll show you exactly what Clint's talking about. So the first shape, let's see, let's just go, um, I really like the interactive polygon tool. All right, so let's select that guy, and you can see by default, all right, what I'm going to do is draw, left click and drag, and I'm going to draw that polygon, and then maybe what do I take them down to three? which will create like a triangle and you can, you know, you have full control over this triangle. All right. But then if you want to go to four, five, 
five, six, eight. You can dramatically change that shape easily on the fly. But I'm going to start off with three. And then I'm also going to go over here to the shape tool. And let's see, ellipse. I'm missing. We're going to go to, where are you? There it is, basic shapes. All right. So under the polygon, all the way down to basic shapes, we're going to left click that. And then you can see this little box right here that highlights the chosen shape. We're going to left click that guy. And I'm going to go to triangle this way. And you can see triangle is selected, and I'm going to select this guy like a wedge. I'm going to make like a wedge out of it. You see there? Wedge, kind of like that right there. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start with these two, and then we'll probably create some more later, which is fine. Okay. Um, now, here's a trick here's or a tip. This is not a trick. We want to go back and hit the pick. That way we're in selection mode, yeah? And I want to make this outline like a bright yellow. So I'm going to go over here to the color film, these color tiles over here, and hit. I'm going to right-click yellow. That way, when I drag this shape over the elephant, I can see where the outline is. If I left it black, I obviously could not see the outline because it would blend in, all right? So what I'm going to do here, all right, is I'm going to lay down my first shape. And you can, if, if we give it another left click, you can see it turns into the rotate tool. And what I can do is I can grab and rotate that shape. And see, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to color this segment of the elephant. Using the Smart Fill tool now, if I just go over and left click the Smart Fill tool, and then see this drop down right here for our fill options, we can change what color we want that fill to be. All right, so I'm gonna start off with maybe a blue, you can see here, and then so I'm gonna click once, and then I'm gonna click twice, and boom, everything inside those intersecting borders has, has now been colorized, and it created a new curve. You see here, it created that curve. So now I can zoom out a little bit, <clears throat> And I want to select, I don't want to go in and select the object I just created. I want to select my shape that I'm using. I'm using this kind of as a stencil, you see. So I'm going to repick this. Guy. See, it wants to select that shape there that I just created. I want to make sure that I create, that I select the shape. So now at this point, what I might want to do is rotate this guy or uh, flip this guy and rotate it. We're going to do a little experimenting. We're going to try to get the two borders as close as we possibly can. It does not have to be perfect because we can easily fix this and close all of the gaps once we get in, into the embroidery canvas. So remember this. It only has to be close. Okay? We just want it close. It does not have to be perfect yet. We can always... This is this. These are vectors at this point. We can always fix anything. All right, so what I'm going to do, you see these little buttons right up here? All right, this is right here. I can go like here, and I can go like here, and then I can grab this guy. All right, would would that look good? I'm looking at this. Uh, that might look, uh, might look all right, okay? It, it's going to start looking like maybe it's striped, so I don't know, but... If we don't want to commit 100% after we've done it, guess what? We have the undo button, so it's no big deal, right? All right, so let me go back to the Smart Fill tool at this point. Change the color slightly because I don't want to layer identical elements on top of each other. I've just changed the tone of blue, and then boom, I've turned, I've turned that segment blue. All right. And maybe that doesn't look so bad. All right. So now let's try another one. <clears throat> and I'm not going to walk you through and talk you through slowly each one of these steps. 
I'll kind of go silent a little bit and just walk through this at that point. Okay, so that, I think that's what I'll do now. You can just kind of follow my workflow. Okay, so what, I, what I'm going to do here, all right, see what I'm doing here? I'm changing it up a little bit. This is going to intersect just a little bit, so I'm going to jog that guy. Okay, I like how that looks. Maybe we go pink, pinky purple, boom. All right, now this might be... Undo. <laughs> I didn't go back to pick mode or selection mode. Now this might be where I'm going to move and switch shapes. Now make sure when you do switch shapes, shapes that you have turned the outline anyway. You have turned the outline um, yellow. So what I could do here is I could go like this and color here but then it gives me this big flat edge so I think what I want to do is flip this guy and then rotate a little bit maybe do something like this yeah and then I'm gonna smart fill this black area here let's see how that looks and it might not look good and that's okay yes Alright, so see what I've done? Yeah. It doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Doesn't look bad at all. So now at that point, what do we got here? Hmm. Maybe I rotate this guy. And I'm going to shrink them a little bit until it gets to where I think it looks all right. Yep, just once. Stretch. Rotate. Move. We'll see. The Smart Fill tool changed the color. Maybe we go a little green there. Boom. There you see. We're keeping with the abstract theme. All right. That, oh, undo, Clint. And you'll forget, just like I am, you're going to forget to switch to pick mode all the time when you go from Smart Fill to pick. So it's really good you're seeing that I'm, I'm like, oops, and then you just hit undo, and it's, uh, <laughs> all those design sins have, have been washed away clean. Okay, so you can see this is kind of looking good right here. Now, here's one thing that I was talking about. You see, these two edges don't line up perfectly. That's fine. We can fix that. We can fix it here, okay? Let me show you one way to fix it. Let's zoom in, and I will double-click this element, all right? until it goes into reshape mode and then when you hover over this node we can grab that node and just drag it right over to the edge and see I've almost fixed it I just have to go to this bottom node when you hover over the node you see the cursor will change I got the node and I'll just bring that node right up to there and pretty much I believe we just we went ahead and tidied that up we closed that gap so now it's perfect. You can also do this in embroidery canvas. All right, so let's let's get back to designing a little bit. Now at this point, maybe I bring in a, an ellipse. So I'll hit the ellipse tool here, and just uh, I'll hit Control while I draw it. And I think what I want to do with the ellipse is do these little ellipses over the feet. 
And remember, let me go ahead and turn that yellow. All right, so now we're going to go to Smart Fill. And for Smart Fill, maybe we'll do an ivory color or something closer to ivory. I don't know. Boom. All right, that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to go back to Selection Mode. I'm going to grab that ellipse, and I'm going to come over this one. Because we'll do all four of the feet the same way. Back to, back to Smart Fill Mode. Boom. Back to pick mode. All right. Let's come on over here. All right. Boom. All right. Back to pick mode. Here we go. Hopefully I'm not moving too fast for y'all. Sometimes people tell me I move too fast, and sometimes people tell me I go too slow. So I don't even know. All right. So there, I've just done all four feet, and you can see oh, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. All right. So now, let me start. Let me. I'm going to grab this guy. Maybe I, I'm going to rotate him a little bit, and let me see how this is going to look if I do something. Hmm. I'm just going to change the size a little bit, because I want to kind of make the bottom of these feet almost the same, okay? So see what I'm doing here, this black area here? I can finish off the feet where these all four of these kind of match, all right? The busy stuff will be up in the meat of the, uh, of the elephant. <laughs> all right, so here, what color shall we do? Uh, green of some kind? I'll do green, and that can, that can be changed later, so that's no big deal. Then I'll go to select, I'll go to pick mode, yeah, I'm doing this visually for your pleasure. Now you can see this isn't going to come off exactly the same way, I don't think. So maybe I double click and rotate just a little bit. I think I'll like the way that looks a little bit better. And then boom, just like that. Go to pick mode, select my shape. And then again, I'll have to give it a double click. A little bit of a rotate so it visually looks the way that I want it to look back to smart fill tool boom just like that back to pick mode all right and double click rotate move it around a little bit yes I like the way that looks smart fill tool and boom there we go all right, I kind of like the way that looks. Back to pick mode. Now I move my shape out of the workspace and take a look at what I've done so far. That's not looking too bad. I don't think it looks too bad. All right, next. Is this abstract enough here, all right, to, to be okay? Let's see. So I'm going to go back to select mode. Let's do a blue. Let's get it here. I think for now I'm okay with that. I can always lay something down over the top of that. So that's okay. All right. So let's go back to pick mode. What is what is next? All right. Let's see. What can we do here? We did too many triangles on top of each other. I do not know how that'll look. I don't think I'm going to like the way that looks. I really like the way this style is going over here as the primary abstract shape. So I'm going to stick with that. Which way do we want to come in? Do I want to come in at that angle? Or we can look. I can do a flip. Yeah. I can do a flip and another flip. Let's do a rotate and experimenting because sometimes you don't know what you want until you actually see it. Yeah? Let's rotate. Let me drag this guy. Actually, that's the same direction. I'm 
not liking that. I'm, I'm wanting to change where the shapes are coming. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe something. Ah, come on. Get it. Maybe something in there. A little bit of a rotate. about that right there boom let's see all right you got to play around with this sometime before you come up with something that you think is okay and then it still might not work still might not work for you okay huh I don't know if I like that I'm gonna undo yep let me undo See, I'm giving you a realistic glimpse as to what this process looks like. I want, yeah, maybe with the point right down there. Yeah, maybe, see, maybe so. Let, yeah, let's see. I didn't really want to intersect over this ear, but you don't know until you go for it. That might be okay. All right, so now... What are we going to do here? Should I go with the... Get the triangle out and do like... Something like that. That might end up looking neat. All these triangles right in the middle. I don't even know. Let's see. All right. This, maybe a light blue, boom, just like that. And then I could probably boom and boom right there, those other two, and see how that comes together. I eh, kind of, yeah, not as bad as I thought it would be. We can always add to it later or go back. So at this point, I'm going to change up my shade a little bit, yes, and I'll do boom and boom like that on the shape. All right, let me get in here and find my shapes, shape templates. Back those on out, and let's look at the work so far. It's not bad. I kind of like it, all right? It might not be your cup of tea, but for what I'm trying to do, I think we're coming a long way. And you can see we, we're not getting real technical. We're using these powerful tools to get us there. All right, so from here... How do I even use a circle? Where would I use a circle? Would I use it here? Like the, ooh. What do you think? Let me zoom in here. You guys can. That would create a pretty neat, with the embroidery, as far as that goes, if it's a satin stitch, that would maybe create a cool effect. Splitting that trunk up like that. I don't know. Hmm. Let's try it. Boom. I'll just leave that that blue as well. All right. We can always delete it later. Hmm. All right. So next. Let's try this guy. Flip it like this. That might be okay. E, not that big though. All right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my template shape smaller. Ah, nope, nope. I just accidentally grabbed the elephant. See how I jogged everything? Just an undo is a real simple fix. I just got ahead of myself. Thinking if I bring that down there, that'll bust up this shape. But I don't want it coming over here. So let me go a little bit smaller. Make sure I grab it. This here. Or I don't know. Okay. Let's give it a try. Change the color to uh, orange. Boop. All right. 
I don't know about that one. All right, let's move this shape. Huh. What do you think of that? Now, you could put an initial there on top of the embroidery. Okay? So, like, if... Because that, that it's almost like the elephant is wearing something in the front that could be so let's let's if I did an S let's see and you know I would add this later in the embroidery canvas obviously it works like that so you do something like that and you're like well it's, I don't like the way that it looks well if you add something to it it might end up being really nice don't know what do you think I think I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to get rid of that S because I can add that later. We'll keep that, and then we can go ahead and boom, boom right here. Let's change those colors. Purple, purple. Yep. Okay. We're getting there. All right. Now you, y'all don't have to follow along me with me exactly. Actually, I think. I don't think there's any possible way that you can have the same exact looking elephant that I do right now. I just don't, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> if you do, you take a screenshot and you prove it. Oh, I hit the undo. Go back to the pick button. All right, let's, let me use this guy here for a little bit different shape. And see, that's following the same line. So I'm going to flip like that. And then maybe a rotate. this it was really really mix things up here all right hold on uh, well I just uh, let me come off the top like this well that's yeah that'll be abstract all right let's get that one but that one's gonna be purple and I can come back and change these colors at any time. I'm just trying to get my shapes laid out. Oh, hit undo. Okay, this happens. You start getting all click happy with the smart fill tool, and all of a sudden, you turn everything one solid color. If that happens, do not panic. What do you do? You hit the undo. That's right. And then we'll go back, fix our mistake, and go back to the pick tool. There. All is forgiven. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, what do I maybe try to incorporate a, uh, a circle in here at some point? All right, from there, let's see. Well, I'm going to definitely have to change the color right there. We got pink in here anywhere. Yeah, there was a, yeah, let's get a green. Boom. All right. Kind of funky. And then let me move my, find my circle over here. Move my circle. Yes. Move the circle. How about this triangle? All right. As you get to the end, it's going to start getting a little harder for you to be happy with your selections. We can't get too crazy with things. All right. Get that guy in there. You can't get so picky that you don't get anything done either. Because you don't know what you're going to end up loving, right? So there, I'm at a point where I'm just going to I'm gonna be happy with what I have here. And I think I can just fill in the rest of these black shapes, all right? Because we have borders here, yes. So at this point, I'll go back to the Smart Fill tool. Hit that blue there, and then it has to be maybe a red color here. Because you don't want very similar colors bordering each other. There we go there, and there we go there. Okay, so I have, it, it is complete. All right, let's go to pick. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my selection tools off the work, work platform here. All right. 
and I want to take things. I'm going to take things at this point over into the into the embroidery canvas, but I'm not going to select all. I only want to select to convert uh, the shapes, the new shapes that I have created. And so if you go over to the object manager, you're going to be able to see that here. What is what? All right. So we can see mixed in with things is my ellipse tool here. I do. I definitely do not want to embroider the ellipse tool. What I might do right here is just select the shapes that I created because these are easy to recreate at a later time. I'm going to delete those. That way, all I'm left with are all of my new curves. You can see starting here all the way up are all my new curves. All right. And then so I'm going to I'm going to hit the bottom one. Right here, I'm going to select, and I'm going to hit Shift, and I'm going to select the top one. And you can see everything that is selected in the Object Manager except for the first two groups, which will be the black silhouette and that part of the ear, the white, this white element of the ear right there is not there. And maybe I want to, maybe I want to do that ear, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup, actually. I'll ungroup here. I don't, I'm not ready to delete away this guy right here. So I'm going to select the black silhouette. I'm going to come here in the middle, select him, and move him off the artwork canvas. So he's still there. He has not been destroyed. But everything else that's left, which are just the shapes and then that white component of the ear, that is all selected. Now, you can convert this to embroidery now, or you could go ahead, you could save this design as, I believe, as a Corel Draw design if you didn't want to destroy it, if you wanted to save it for later use. I would suggest doing that. So why don't we try doing that? Let's hit a file, okay? And a, what is it like? Uh, is it save as? No, 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 no. A save as is going to save it to cancel. All right, it's been a while, sorry. If you do a save as, it's going to save it as a as a digitizing uh, project. What we want to do is a file export, and then I believe at that point we can hit save as type. We can save it as you could save it as a an SVG would be just fine. Okay, then you could open it up. I mean, you could save it as a Corel Draw, a CDR, but we can open SVG files in this program. But then if you save it as a scalable vector graphic, you can open this up in some of your other programs too, like your cut cutting programs. So I'll just save it as an SVG, okay? So this is I'm going to save this as Elephant Abstract 2. And it's going to go in uh, it's going to go in documents, which is fine. I'll hit export. Boom. So I oh, let me hit okay. And it has exported that design that I've created, okay? So this, I can bring this back up and load this into the program at a later time, any time that I want, okay? So, so now that we've done that and we've kind of backed up a version of this, then I'm just going to draw a selection, boom, like that. I've selected all of my new curves, yeah? All the new vector elements that I've created, this abstract pattern elephant silhouette. It's all selected, and now we get to convert this to embroidery, all right? So we'll go ahead and convert this to embroidery, and then that'll be the end of this part one video. Part two that I will record probably later or tomorrow. Part two, we will go through everything that we want to do with this guy once it's in the embroidery canvas, all right? So let's go ahead and hit convert, and we will see what happens. Okay, let me zoom out. And you can see we converted this guy. It's very big. The size is very big. And we can, of course, resize this. We can change the fill to different types of fills, pattern fills. We can do some outlines. We can do some really fun stuff with this. We could probably even do an applique type thing. And maybe I do a few videos where we go a few different directions through down a couple different rabbit holes instead of just one once we have this guy once we've made the artwork and we have this guy in the embroidery canvas then the real fun starts okay but you can see how far we've 
excuse me, you could see how far we got in a fairly short amount of time without doing anything that was too incredibly um, technical. All right, so I, I really hope that you enjoyed this, this free section, this free video. If you would like to see more videos like this, please join me on passionstitch.com website. It is a subscription website. There is also some free content over there, so go check it out. This is Clint Seeley. Thank you for watching.